we had people on that nobody would put on television. The whole country wanted Muhammad Ali in, in, in jail because he said, I'm not going to go to Vietnam and be other people who aren't as much trouble to me as white people in America. Jane Fonda went to Vietnam. They wanted her not only locked up, they wanted her shot for helping the Viet Cong. But that kind of action by private citizens is what helped stop that illegal war. People marched, they voted with graffiti in Chicago. That's what did that. Our show made news. We won our first Emmy, but, and Ronald Reagan called because we were so popular and wanted to be on when he was running for his second term as governor. Oh, there are lots of people who hated John Kennedy, believe me. I mean, there were millions in this country who were happy to see him dead, even applauded when he was shot. But only one force had the power to stop the investigation, and that was the federal government. Yes, sir. yes uh, that's interesting because I was going to tell you a little anecdote here. You're right. When you talk about means, motives, and opportunities, there were several groups that had both the means and the motives and the opportunities. All right, the mafia is a big one. Blakey, uh, as John mentioned, the House Committee, you know, he finally wrote a subtitle that said the, the, the organized crime killed Kennedy. All right, now this, there's, and there's a lot of evidence to, to point to mafia involvement. Uh, and because of the church committee and other things, we do now know that the CIA and the mafia were working hand in glove uh, on several plots to include assassination. So uh, at one point, I, uh, before the movie, before the JFK thing even came up, I was in New Orleans and I managed to have lunch with Jim Garrison. And being the idiot reporter that I am, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm the guy that says, hey, the emperor hadn't got any clothes on. So I, we were having lunch, and I found him to be a very literate, a very educated, very thoughtful, intellectual person. Uh, we were having quite a nice discussion, and I finally just looked him right in the eye, and I said, well, you know, some of your critics are saying that you're blaming the CIA uh, and because you're trying to draw attention away from the mafia. I says, do you not believe that there was any mafia involvement in the assassination? And here's what he told me, and it makes absolutely sense, and I agree with him. He said, I have no doubt that there were elements of the mafia involved in the assassination. He said, but they couldn't block a federal investigation, and they couldn't cover the thing up. Only the CIA and or agencies hired. Do you guys realize that during the height of the Cold War, uh, we were facing the intelligence uh, system of the, of the Soviet Union, they have one intelligence outfit, the KGB. Today, in the United States, land of the free, home of the brave, we've got about 26 <laughs> alphabet agencies. The DIA, the CIA, the NSA, blah, 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 NRO, you name them. And some of them much more powerful than the CIA ever thought about it being. The NSA, National Security Agency is three times the size of the CIA. And by the way, they're putting the finishing touches on a multi-billion dollar uh, facility in uh, Nevada where they're going to keep every email, every phone call you ever made on the phone. How's that for home of the free, land of the brave? Now, I'm just going to leave you with this and then I'll answer any questions you may have. In the 1600s, there was a British uh, aristocrat named John Harrington. Uh, you all have probably not heard of him, uh, except for his most famous invention, the flushing toilet. Uh, this, by the way, is why it's often referred to as the John, because of John Harrington. But he also was quite a thinker, and he wrote a little poem all the way back there in the 1600s. And it is so apropos to the Kennedy assassination, and it goes like this. Treason doth never prosper. What the reason? For if it prospers, none dare call it treason. And it's exactly what we have here. And this is held up for 51 years. This was treason. This was a palace revolt. The cover-up is the key to it. Anyone could have killed Kennedy. Mafia hitmen, KGB agents, Castro agents, uh, 
Iran, CIA operatives, you know, and yes, even the provincial, provincial lone nut, okay? But the question is, who had the power to misdirect any investigation by the district attorney's office in New Orleans, the state attorney general's office in Texas, the FBI, the CIA, the Secret Service, the U.S. military, or the police forces of this country. And now we're beginning to get to the crux of the problem, which is who really runs this country? And in case you hadn't figured it out, it's not you or me. Any questions? Yes. Uh, do you know much about the, the reason that, that Oswald went to Russia? Why did Oswald go to Russia? All right, let me see if I can make this short and sweet. Oswald had a secret security clearance, and he was working as a radar operator, and as such, uh, at Atsugi Base in Japan, this was one of the connecting points between Turkey, Japan, for the U-2 spy plane overflights over the Soviet Union. Oswald had access to this information. So see, he wasn't just some low-level schnook anyway. Um, when he defected to Russia, uh, this was about the time that Khrushchev and uh, President Eisenhower had actually finally met face to face and found out that they kind of had a rapport with each other. And they both decided they were going to hold a summit meeting and it was speculated that they would end the Cold War. This was in the 50s. This was like 1958, okay? And so everybody was really had high hopes that we were in the Cold War. And what happened? Well, a U-2 plane got shot down over Russia, or came down over Russia, and we denied it. We said, well, it's not our plane. We don't know anything about that. But then the Russians hauled Gary Francis Powers before the TV cameras, and turns out, yeah, we did know about it. And then it later comes out that Eisenhower had ordered a cessation of all these U-2 flights in preparation for this summit. Khrushchev, too, had ordered no uh, aggressive moves against the, our spy planes in preparation for this summit. And yet the war hawks on both sides apparently bypassed their own leadership. Uh, the U-2 flight that Powers was on was launched despite orders to the contrary. The Russians did try to shoot it down anyway, and it's still debatable whether this plane was actually shot down or whether there might have been some kind of sabotage on it to bring it down. But the end result was they scrapped the uh, summit meeting, it never happened, and we continued into a Cold War that lasted until the 90s. Um, one of the theories is because Oswald knew the secrets of the U-2 that one of his jobs as defector to Russia uh, was to hand over the altitude uh, flight level of the U-2, which allowed the Russians to bring it down. And this was done with the connivance of uh, hawks within the U.S. military uh, and their counterparts in, the, in Russia to scuttle the plans for the summit. And both Khrushchev and Eisenhower later said this. They said, you know, we were torpedoed, and that was that. Uh, one thing I'd mention in addition to all this is that Oswald never defected to Russia. He showed up in Russia under mysterious circumstances. He couldn't have used any commercial means to get there in the time frame they gave him, so how did he get there in the first place? We don't know. Uh, and then he waited till a Saturday to go to the U.S. Embassy and tell them that he was going to defect. And not only was he going to defect, but he had been a radar operator in the Marines, and he was going to give military secrets to the Russians. Well, that's treason, okay? And yet, so what is he told? He said, well, it's a Saturday, and we're not fully functioning. You need to come back on Monday and fill out all the uh, pertinent paperwork. Well, he never did. And that's why, after a year of living in Russia, uh, he, for some reason, decides he wants to come back to the United States. Well, not only is he given a passport, a visa, but the United States government actually loans him the money to come back to the United States on. And by the way, in speaking and interviewing his wife, Marina, I found it very, very interesting that they didn't just come directly back to the United States. They stopped over in uh, Amsterdam, in Holland, for 
about three days where they stayed at a private home where everybody spoke English. Well, Marina didn't speak English, so she wasn't real clear on what was happening there, but I'm telling you, that was his debriefing, right? Because just as his mother always told me, Lee works for the United States government. And the evidence that he was a CIA operative, actually he probably began in the Marines and then was picked up by Office of Naval Intelligence, passed along to the CIA, and then by the time of the events in Dallas, he was actually making $200 a month under the code name T-179 as an informant for the FBI just to augment his, his uh, pit paltry salary. One of the reasons I know this is because there were the, even the Warren Commission reports several instances of him going in and cashing a check for about $179, okay? Now, if you've ever worked for the government, you know that the one thing they insist on is that you pay your taxes. So let's say that the information we got is correct. He was agent T-179. He was getting $200 a month from the FBI as an informant, but he had to pay taxes on it, so that back at that time, that would come up to about $179, all right? And so here was three or four people that said, yeah, I'm Western Union, said we cash checks uh, for Oswald for $179, and what did the Warren Commission say? They said, well, since we, we have no knowledge that he had any job paying that, then those people were just all mistaken. That was the end of that. This is what happens when you are top heavy in your investigation and you can run the investigation. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, what do you know about the uh, allegation that LBJ was uh, being investigated and the only thing keeping him out of jail was becoming president? Yes. Why was LBJ being investigated? Yes, he was. Uh, what has now become clear and has been revealed by former employees of Life Magazine is that this is actually pretty wild, that Bobby Kennedy had been leaking information to Life Magazine about all of the scandals that Lyndon Johnson was involved in. Bobby Baker, uh, Billy Saul Estes, the TFX contract over at Convair, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and that they were building the case on Johnson and in fact, we're preparing a special edition that was gonna run the week of November, the, the Thanksgiving week of November, 1963, okay? But then of course, the assassination happened in Dallas and the next week, they scrapped the LBJ article, which the people involved said they thought there was enough evidence that would probably not only knock him out of the vice presidency, but put him in jail. And they instead, they carried the very famous edition about the assassination of President Kennedy. I might mention also that Johnson was about to lose his lifetime position. Uh, Richard Nixon was in Dallas the week of the assassination and told uh, both the Dallas News and the Dallas Times Herald that uh, the Kennedys were going to drop Johnson from the 1964 Democratic ticket. Um, at the same time, uh, it was widely rumored in Washington that the Kennedys were going to force uh, the retirement of FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, who, as you heard in the documentary, was longtime close friend, neighbor to Lyndon Johnson, because uh, they were going to force him to retire because he was approaching the mandatory uh, retirement age uh, under the regulations. One month after the assassination, in January '64, uh, Johnson held a a meeting in a press conference in the Rose Garden of the White House, praised Lyndon, uh, J. Edgar Hoover for his anti-communist activities and exempted him personally from the mandatory retirement age, which then, of course, installed him as FBI director for life. Both of them had their jobs saved and their reputations intact with the death of uh, John Kennedy. Any other questions? Back here. A great change is at hand, and our task, our obligation, is to make that revolution, that change, peaceful and constructive for all. Those who do nothing are inviting shame as well as violence. Those who act boldly are recognizing right as well as reality.